Hey everybody, I'm Hans. Welcome to Hans Solo Board Gaming. Today in this video I'm going to go over the games that make my list for the top 10 board games of 2019. Now, before we get into all this wonderful game talk, I want to demystify my process here. Um, there are going to be games here that did not come out in only 2019. For me, I needed a wider spectrum. I wasn't going to acquire that many new games this year. So here were the two criteria for making the list. Um, I had to have played them in 2019, so if I didn't play them this year, they will not be on this list. There's lots of really good games that I like that I didn't play this year, and they won't be on this list because of it. The second thing is um, it had to be a solo play. There are some games that I only play multiplayer that I really, really love that would probably make it somewhere on this list, possibly, but they weren't even considered because it's my channel is for solo board gaming and that is what I want to reflect in this top 10. So um, those are the two criteria of games making the list. So after compiling the list of games, I played this calendar year. I threw them into the Pub Meeple ranking engine. For those who have not used this list generator, you input a list of games and then it has you pick them between two of them, which you'd rather play. It does this till it ranked all the games on the list. I've included a link to it, it's wonderful, try it. After that, I looked at the play count for each game in the new list and adjusted their position by the amount of plays. Each game would climb up one spot for each play that was made. And that's it, super simple, not overthought out or convoluted in any way. Okay, enough about how the meat was made, let's get into it. This one is very much based on my excitement over future plays. I have only played the base track, but there are so many expansions in this one that there's so much content to explore and, and discover. It's going to feel so new for so long. Pair that with a super simple, deep worker placement mechanic, um, the very clever weather mechanic, and some of the best looking components and presentation I've seen in gaming. And you have a recipe for a game that will hit the table very frequently um, moving forward. My guess as to why it's not higher on this list uh, lack of plays, probably. Only time will tell. But number 10 is Snowdonia. This is the definition of late to the party. In 2019, provided me my first solo play of Terraforming Mars. And as you could have guessed, it didn't disappoint. There's great engine building, there's awesome multiple win conditions, and it has a great length and weight for me personally. It may go down as a solo classic one of these days. Um, so why so low? Well, it may be the same reason I didn't get a solo play of it until 2019. It just seems to be easy to glance over when looking at other games that I want to play. It's so solid in so many ways, but for me, lacks that flash, that draw of some other games. I will say that this game does get thought and considered of to be played almost each time I'm trying to choose, so it's regularly on my mind and I know I'm going to enjoy the play of it. So that says something about this game. Terraforming Mars comes in at number nine this year. Ah, one of my first loves. First there was Catan, then there was Arkham Horror, and then came Istanbul. This game did so many new things for me in terms of gaming and opened my eyes to what games could be. The constantly changing locations, the module board creating a different route plan each time, and oh, those beautiful rubies. The current solo experience does a fantastic job of manipulating the board and making the price of things increase naturally, but it was missing it was missing something. It was missing an inspired solo opponent. In 2019, I took steps to develop a playable AI that not only affects the game board but can put the pressure on you to get those rubies as fast as you can. 
once I get that AI where I want it, I see this game climbing up this list. But for now, Istanbul is my number eight game of 2019. Russian Railroad's little brother finally got the love it deserved this year. It was one of my most played games, and that's mostly due to the fact that I was trying to develop a solo opponent for it. This one makes my top 10 because of its short, sweet playtime, and its complex engine building. 18 actions is all you get, and you better make the most of each one of those suckers. For me, that's solo gaming at its finest. What's keeping this one from rising up the rankings? Well, I'm still looking at locking down that only thing that's missing from the, this game, and that's an AI opponent to put pressure on you as you play. If I can figure that out, this train game will go into 2020 full steam ahead. First class pulls in at number seven this year. One of the most consistent games that I own and easily played the most. That's Viticulture. It rarely ends in a disappointment. Yes, the draw of the cards can make or break you, but there are so many decisions that run parallel to the outcome of the game that it never truly affected me. This game keeps getting played, mostly because of the campaign mode. In the campaign mode, the starting condition or sum rule has changed somehow from the base game. In one campaign, you must gain all your workers before a certain round, otherwise you lose. Auto. Done. Right there. In another, you're not able to use special actions, but you start the game with three planted fields. Those small changes really test your ability to hit that point threshold for victory. What's stopping this one from being higher on this list? Even though each play still feels inspired, there are shinier, newer things that seem to be catching my eye more often. Maybe I need to finally introduce the Tuscany expansion to breathe some life into this classic. Viticulture holds strong at number six this year. According to the Pub Meeple, Ranking Engine, Grand Austria Hotel is my most preferred game. It came out number one. Why it's so far down on this, this, year, this list this year? Number of plays. I only played it once this year, which is just a shame. This game has so much to manage, and with so few turns to execute it, um, you really have to plan everything out really well in order to score big. You've got to prep the rooms, you've got to make the food and drink, you've got to recruit and serve the guests, you have to hire the staff, and you have to pay respect to the emperor or pay the consequences. The different pairings of wait staff, along with the random action production from the dice leads to a lot of making the most of the situational moments, and I just adore that. Each choice truly f feels like it matters, and there are just enough things to do that when you can actually do them all, you feel like the grandest ho hotel manager of all. Grand Austria Hotel finishes at number five this year. Anachrony was one of the most intimidating games I approached in 2019, but I put the work in and boy oh boy did it pay off. What a wonderful worker placement game with a terrific time travel mechanic. I absolutely adore the amount of planning that goes into your decisions for your workers each round, weighing the pros and cons of activating another suit, deciding which buildings to include in your engine so you can get more things done each turn, and committing to time travel and the pressure f to fulfill that travel debt all push you down as you navigate and rebuild after the apocalypse. Top it all off with an amazing solo AI that allows you some prediction, but always leaves the door open for a wild outcome. There truly aren't a lot of AIs out there that can match the cleverness and ease of the Chronobot. You do have to commit quite a lot of mental focus to planning um, in this one, so it might not hit the table as much as it should. However, once you've learned it, it, consider it gets considerably easier to manage, and there's 
very little reason not to play this one. Anachrony makes the, a meteoric rise in the list up to number four this year. I'm pretty sure there will always be one Yui game in my top ten each year. Newsfjord has bumped Glass Road from the list, and for me, that is high praise. The pairing of buildings to create an effective engine is successfully transposed from Glass Road to Newsfjord, but Yui has added many new layers. There are the elders, which are special actions you can take but will cost you. There are the company shares that if you if you aren't issuing those shares, you lose points. And there's a shipping capacity that dictates how much income you get each round. All these additions lead to a more robust experience. He didn't even have to fast sacrifice playtime or game tightness to achieve it. It's a board gaming wonder that all need to behold. What keeps it from one of the top spots is just not heavy enough to feel fully satisfied after a go at it. There is so much to love about it and you definitely have to work your tail off to achieve the good scoring range, but it just doesn't have that weight to compete with some of those higher up on this list. Newsfjord sails its way to number three on this list. Circadian's First Light is a dice placement resource management game. You get a character with a very specific skill that lets you break the rules in some way. You gain points by negotiating with the locals, maxing out item cards, and upgrading your own player board. With solid dice mitigation and a plethora of paths to score points, this is one robust solo experience. I enjoy upgrading my player board, using my player's special powers to drive my strategy, and using the round's event to make the most out of each of my turns. The AI in this one rivals the Anachrony one, but falls short due to its more methodical approach to getting points and taking up spaces. Visually, it is one of the best looking games I've played this year. I've got the expansion to add with an intense level AI to still compete against, so I'm excited to get this to back to the table more. Circadians made a strong first impression with me and makes it to the number two on this list. And that brings us to number one. The best part of 2019 in board gaming was a return to Arkham in Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. I was a fanboy of 2nd Edition, so much so that I swore off Eldritch as a whole world knockoff that lacked the charm of Arkham Horror. The reprinting of Arkham Horror brought with it a better storytelling mechanic, an easier management system, and a modular board. All these things resulted in an utterly positive play experience. The ease of playing one or two investigators uh, allowed me to have that flexibility while I played. The theme of the scenario matching the mechanics they introduce each scenario and the feel of managing the chaos in the small town while the world dies around you. It was all there. It included everything I ever wanted out of Arkham Horror, and it looked and felt amazing. The only thing that didn't make the transition from the second to third edition was the manipulation of your character's traits. Moving those sliders was a clever mechanic that led to some difficult decisions in a game that I really appreciated out of second edition. That aside, I consider Arkham Horror 3rd Edition a success and expect it to be on any list of mine for some time to come. Hands down, this was my favorite game of 2019. And that was it, my top 10 board games of 2019. Again, I'm Hans. Thanks again for watching. If you like that list and want to see other games like those ones on this list, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any videos I'll be putting out. Thanks again.